Hey everybody, um, I've mixed about 9 or 10 ounces of resin. I see a piece of glitter floating. How typical is that? And um, I'm trying to let it sit as long as I can, but I'm going to go ahead and add about an ounce to this mica that I have in this cup. Probably don't even need an ounce. This is just a sparkly blue. And it is Petra Petra from uh, YouTube. She also has an Etsy channel. Sparkling Sapphire and Sparkle White in it. And I'm going to add Baja Blue. Well, say a, a drop or so. It'll adjust the color just slightly. Let me just put a drop and see how that looks. Looks pretty good. I might add one more drop, I'm not sure. So I have sparkling white in the cup here. I'm gonna add about the same amount of the white. Maybe a little less. I mean more. A little bit more. It's messy here. So that's just sparkle white. If you can see that, but it's really beautiful, and you can add it into any color. Um, that's from Petra. I put some cast and craft, a little squirt of that so this just makes it more opaque but you still have the shimmer and I'm going to put a few drops of alcohol ink white into that I'm going to put one more drop of Baja Blue in here So these hold, these are five inch coasters. They hold at least four ounces of resin. And I'm gonna just split up. Well, okay, and I've got some glitter before I pour my resin in here. Got some glitter. This is Laura's Art Corner Ballroom Blitz, which is really very holographic looking. And Counter Cultures Mirage, which is a little bit chunkier. So we're going to see, with just a little bit of resin added to this, move this back here. I don't need a lot. I just want a colorful holographic. I've 
mix this. This is counterculture medium viscosity. I mixed it for six minutes or so and I actually let it sit for a little while because I'm going to do the bloom, 3D bloom, and it it does better if you let it sit for a bit. Okay, I gotta get down here and sit and see. Okay, so I'm gonna transfer these to put it over here, scoot this just a bit so you can see. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of bubbles. You can always, you know, with clear, you can always see a little bit easily, more easily than when you're doing colors or lots of glitter. You've got, you can see your bubbles and stuff way more. All right. I'm going to cut off the tip. Make sure that this is about the right amount coming out. And I definitely cannot sit to do this, so I'm gonna gonna do this standing, but um so I can get this glitter rained back in a little bit. I should have put the resin in first, I think, but anyway.
I don't do this perfectly, but it is fun. So we'll just kind of wait and see how it turns out. So I'll be back later. Okay. I was gonna put a top coat on this, but this is so pretty. I just can't. <laughs> so I am gonna leave it as is and leave it clear, which I typically don't do. Um, I just have, I have to unmold them. I just really do. So there's the one side. That is so pretty. OMG. I had, I really had special plans for the backs of these, but just couldn't do it because I liked this side so much, but I'm equally pleased with the other side. And I love the confetti in the middle, the glitter, which is uh, Laura's Art Corner Ballroom Blitz, which I could have just used, but I ended up adding a colorful Mirage. But um, anyway, I love it. It's so beautiful. These are again are five inches. They're really big coasters. Ah, I love it. I love it gonna do silver edges I know for sure which it, but it's kind of cool that you can see the detail they're not super thick because like I said I was gonna put another coat on them but can't I can't I can't Win win. Ah, I love them. I love them. So I always keep them on a hard surface for at least 24 hours or so after I demold. So that gives them 24, 48 hours to cure really well and strong. Otherwise, they can get a little bit flexible until they're fully cured. But huh, they're so pretty. Oh, yes. All right. So I'll show a video maybe outside when they're done and cured. Silver Edges pictures, so, and they will be available. Okay, so it's the next day, and here they are. This is the bottom side, which is originally what I had planned on, you know, with the confetti glitter showing, the uh, Mirage, and the Ballroom Blitz. Um, that's the bottom side. And as you can see, there's the 3D effect, which is lovely. And then this is just a wispier, softer side. So, um, and then I did the chrome on the edges and I did it around the rim. This has a little bit of a lip. If you can see that little bit of a lip there. So I did it around the edges and with these pens, um, I have done many, many sets uh, with this pen, but I think it's almost out. But you know, you kind of press it 
and you have to do a couple of coats on clear. When you do it on a deeper color, for some reason it, it does a better coat, but you, you cannot touch it anywhere um, or it will make it kind of dull looking because it's called chrome and it really looks like chrome. So anywhere that I've touched the edges, I'm just kind of going back. I do not have a steady hand. I don't ever claim to make these perfectly. There will never be a perfect set of coasters. They're, it's always going to look hand done because they're handmade. I'm not a robot. So this one here is the one that I unmolded last night and I left the other three in the mold and I took this one out because I just had to see it because I wanted to know if I needed to put a really pretty background but I loved both sides so much I decided not to do that but here's the, here's the one thing that happens if you take something out of a mold do you see that little dent right there it's barely noticeable but this is the bottom of the coaster so when you lift it away from the silicone rubber it um, it gets that air pocket in there and if it's not fully cured in that mold when you uh, if, even if you take it out to look at it and put it back in you're going to get some indentations and slight imperfections um, let's see if you can see a little bit of that this is the only one that happened and it's because I halfway demolded it because I couldn't wait to look. So that's my warning to you is you can't really take something out of the mold until it's finished. Um, but I didn't want to add anything else to these because I loved them. So I've added chrome on the sides and on the rim here and I've got this rim which is the one that has a little bit of a lip. And so basically I just put my pen right along that edge of that lip and the lip actually I kind of went over a little bit there but that doesn't really matter the lip actually kind of is a guide for your pen and if you try to if you try to direct it you make more mistakes so it's better to kind of put the pin on the rim and you kind of turn your coaster. Don't go back and forth like I'm doing now because when you go back and forth is when you're going to... I think it's because my um, my paint is running low in this pen. I've done so many. If you wipe it right off it'll it'll come off immediately but once it's dried it's oil based so you have to use um, alcohol or acetone but this is kind of my imperfect one anyway I can always go back with a q-tip and straighten up the line or you know whatever but I did both sides of the lip because I want it reversible. So again it's um, a couple of coats on the sides. You can kind of see through it. I guess when it's clear you can kind of see through it more. So that kind of tells you where you need to go back and touch up the paint. The paint is very shiny and chrome looking. It's one of my favorite silvers ever. The gold Molotow, the same brown Molotow, the gold, I did not care for it at all. So I use either Krylon or that Deco, it's Deco something, it's not Deco Art, but it's a, it says Deco something. It's in my Amazon link. The gold pins there, those are really awesome. But this brand and the gold is not very, it's a really strange bronzy 
weird color. So, again, there's the the bottom side, which or the top side when it I poured it in the mold. Just put a little alcohol or a little acetone, and that will clean up any edges. I sanded some of the like what felt sharp to me or whatever, but uh, generally I don't sand the coasters on the edges. So just touched up. But I think they came out lovely. This would be the top side when I poured the resin in and it came out so soft and shimmery and then the bottom side has that 3D feel. And it sparkles so beautifully and that is because whoops I added Petra's Sparkle White which is her uh, Etsy stores below my video that's what made the blue and the white sparkle as I added it to my colors and I used her um, sparkling sapphire but then I also added cast and craft white and I added pinata white to the white and I added pinata vaja blue to her sparkling blue just to deepen it just slightly and um, it was going to be very transparent so when I was piping out the resin I kind of went around in places a second time just to um, make it a little bit stronger and I'm glad I did. Again these are not perfect but they're made with love by a human being and I don't expect perfection with any of my art. It is a reflection of who we are as human beings and we're allowed to mess up and correct our mistakes, you know. That's the business of life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I am super happy with them. I'll show pictures of them in the sun, outside, and in a few other areas so you can see what they look like. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>